definite integration is basically just same as the indefinite integrations, but now we're going to have the lower limit and upper limit. In order to find the answer for definite integrations, we're going to find the indefinite integration first, then substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. But just remember that it's not necessary that we have the upper limit have a higher in values. But we're going to make sure that in the intervals of A to B for our limit, the function must be defined and continuous. Means that in between the boundary, there must be no holes, no asymptote, and no jumping around. So let's say we have a function of 2x, and we're going to take the integration from 0 to 2 with respect to x. So basically, we just need to substitute in our upper limit into the indefinite integrals and minus off the lower limit. So let us find the indefinite integrals first. As we know, it's just going to increase the power by 1. So we have x squared over 2, but don't forget in front I have a 2 as well, plus c. So this is why we have x squared plus c. Then after that, we're going to substitute our upper limit into our indefinite integrals and lower limit is 0 into the indefinite integrals. Then we're going to find the difference of them. Can you see that? The c is so nice that we can cut it off because c minus positive c is nothing. So eventually in definite integrals, we can skip the part of writing down plus c. So after we compute answer, we have 4 as our answer. So we can see that the integration for 2x from 0 to 2 is 4. So let us illustrate what we really happen by using a graph. So let us plot this line of 2x first. Then we're going to look at what does the 4 tell us. If you look at the symbol of integrations, it looks like a S. So eventually, integration will do the works for the summations of the pieces under the curve or under our line for this case. So if we eventually, it will cut through the axis into a several pieces of rectangles. Then after that, it will help us to count and sum up all of the area of the rectangles. Depends on which axis that we are bounding. So for this case, we are bound into the x-axis. Then after that, they will tell us the area under the curve. So this is why we can say that this 4 is eventually the area under the line from 0 to 2. So we are going to look at the boundary first, which is 0 and 2. And we look at where is the regions that they cover us. And they tell us that the region they cover must be the in a yellow color. So let's try to find the area because this is just a triangle. So the area of triangle is 1 over 2 times the base. For this one, it's only 2 times the height, which is 4. So if you compute this one, eventually we get back 4. So it's why indeed integration will tell us whatever the area under the curve. So how about now we are going to take the integration from negative 2 to negative 1. So we're going to learn a new way of writing down. Eventually, we can just write down in, in a square bracket. And inside the square bracket is our indefinite integrals, which is going to be 2x squared over 2. And then we're going to write down our limit at the side here. So let's say our lower limit is negative 2 and negative 1. Do you remember that? We always start from the upper limit minus the lower limit. So let us substitute in 2 and 2 cut off. So it's going to be negative 1 squared minus negative 2 squared. So this is why we have something like this. Again, write down in a square bracket and then substitute in. And in the end, we have a negative 3. Why at this time we have a negative numbers? Let us try to illustrate in the graph now. So our answer is negative 3. So we're going to set in the boundary from negative 2 to negative 1. And we're going to draw out the region first where is it bounded. Is bounded into the x axis. So the blue color will eventually represent the negative 3. But why is it negative said this? Because we are slices with reference to our x axis. So whatever above the x axis is considered as positive. And whatever below the x axis we have a negative. But if we are looking at the area, we can just say that we are looking at the modulus of negative 3, which if we give us a 3 unit square. So just remember that whenever we are counting the area of the regions, 
we always take the modulus of the answer because area cannot be negative. This is why we say that this region have three units square of area. So let's say now we have a line of f of x here. And we know if you are taking the integration for this function with respect to x from a to b, it basically tells us that what is the area under the curve for this region, right? So usually we're going to plot the region first from a and then for b. And after that, we shade the region that we are interested. So this integration will tell us the area for these regions. How about now we have the integration for these functions from b to c. So same thing, we're going to set the boundary first from b to c and the area under the curve is the one that we are interested. So if you combine together, the region is eventually the area from a to c under the line. So eventually they tell us that we can just write down in a shortcut way where we can say that we are taking the integration from a to c of this function straight away. They will eventually give us the same answer in the end. So what that means is, if you are taking integration from a to b is our first answer, the integration from b to c is our second answer, when we add up together, it's the same as if we are taking the integration from a to c for this function with respect to x straight away. How about now we have the lower limit and the upper limit is exactly the same. Let's try to illustrate. The lower limit is a, but upper limit is also a. So it basically produces no area at all. This is why we say that in this case, we have zero as our answer. Now we're going to look at the comparison when we have the lower limit and upper limit changes the placement. So let's try it out. As we know, write down the square and inside of a square is just the indefinite integrals. But don't forget, we're not going to write the plus C for definite Y because then we cancel out eventually. So after we simplify first, we have just x squared. So upper limit go first. So it's upper limit minus the lower limit. Then we have 4 minus 1, which is 3. How about now where we have the limit swap? So again, just the integrations, which is after simplify just x squared. Upper limit is 1, lower limit is 2. But don't forget always the upper limit first, although the value is smaller. So it's 1 squared minus 2 squared. So this one will produce us with negative 3. So eventually when we swap the limit, they will give us the opposite sign of it. So let us try to have a recap again. So this one, write down like this. Substitute the lower limit and upper limit, and we find that the answer is eventually 3. When we swap the limit and do it again, we have the answer as negative 3. So as a conclusion, when we swap the limit, they will give us the opposite sign of whatever the original value is. They tell us that if there is a constant in front of the functions, Eventually, we can take out the constant first. Then only we take the integration for this function from a to b. When we have a two function combined together, eventually we can separate it based on the sign. If there is a plus, then we plus it. If there is a minus, we minus it. So eventually, we can set, have the same boundary, but separate the two functions and do it individually. For example, we have the integration from 1 to 2 for the function of 2x plus the function of x squared dx. So eventually we can write down as the integration from 1 to 2, 2x dx, plus the integration from 1 to 2, same boundary for x squared dx, they only be compute. Let's try to compute these integrations. First, we're going to use a square bracket and then integrate the term one by one. So x squared, if we integrate the power increase by one, we have x cubed, divided by new power, then we have x increased by 1 become x squared, and then we divide by the new power. If we integrate the constant, if we just mesh together with the variable that we are integrating, it become 4x. And then don't forget, we're going to add our limit, which is from 1 to 2. And then after that, we're going to simplify first. If we simplify this one, it become x cubed plus x squared plus 4x. But again, don't forget the limit, which is from 1 to 2. So next, we're going to substitute in the upper limit first. For me, usually I write to 
do it like a big bracket first and then prepare a two smaller bracket one for upper limit one for lower limit because it's the upper limit minus the lower limit after that, substitute in the things that we want 2 cube plus 2 square plus 4 times 2 for the lower limit we will have 1 cube plus 1 square plus 4 times 1 after that we can compute now for the first bracket 2 cube is just add 2 square is 4 4 times 2 is 8 this is the upper limit minus lower limit 1 cube is 1 1 square is 1 4 times 1 is 4 and then the last we just need to compute everything so we have 8 plus 4 is 12 12 plus 8 is 20 minus 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6 so in the end we have the final answer is 14 and we are done this is the piece of information that they give and they ask us to find the integration from 5 to 2 for these functions. Do you realize that the upper limit and the lower limit have been swapped? If they are swapping the limits, we know the answer is going to be the opposite sign of whatever the original. So for this case, it's going to be negative 3. Next, there is the constant in front of the functions, which we know we can take it out first, 1 over 2. The integration from 2 to 5 f of x dx but since it's so obvious that integration of 2 to 5 f of dx is given in the question which is 3 so we can say that it's just 1 over 2 times 3 which is equivalent to 3 over 2 and we are done next we're going to have the integration from 5 to 5 but we know if they are the same limit there is no area under the curve and next we're going to have the limit from 2 to 3 and 3 to 5 remember it's something like this we have the area from 2 to 3 and then added with from 3 to 5 so basically we are looking for the entire region here and we can say that it's a short form way from 2 to 5 f of x dx but since they given to us which is 3 right this is the one given so answer is just 3 and one last question this is a plus or minus we can separate it you can see there is a constant in front so we can return as 3 integration of 2 to 5 f of x dx minus the same limit which is from 2 to 5 2 dx then now we're going to compute this is just 3 and the limit of 2 to 5 is given which is in the question is just 3 again minus this one 2 remember integration of constant is just matched with the variable and then the limit is from 2 to 5 then we get to compute 3 times 3 is 9 minus this is going to be a upper limit minus the lower lower limit but what's the upper limit? It's 2 times 2x, right? 2x is 2 times 5, which is 10. Lower limit is 2 times 2, which is 4. So this is why we, we have something like 9 minus 10 minus 4, which is 9 minus 6. And in the end, we have 3. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.